and welcome to From the Depths for Warships of History, the show where we're going to be recreating some classic warships, and, well, we're going to be fighting them to the death. The game is From the Depths. It's a voxel building game, which is basically like Minecraft, except you build vehicles that shoot at each other, and launch missiles at each other, and laser each other, and you get the picture. So, let's spawn in... I'm sitting here in, like, the sandbox mode, by the way. Let's spawn in the monitor. This is the ship I have been working on. And I'm excited to present it to you. So here we are. I'm gonna just go. Let's go inside. Wrong button. Whoops. Let's go inside. A uh, little bit finicky right now. But if we can get in. Close the door. And... Welcome to the ship. You can see we have the ship's wheel, our, uh, all of our supplies here, some air pumps to keep us from flooding, and it's an AI to manage everything so we don't need a crew. And up here is the ammo supply. This is encased in metal, because if this explodes, we are doomed. Just saying. Alright, so, let's take a look at the ship, and I'll put up a couple images of what the monitor actually looked like uh, from some historical carvings and engravings, um, and here's here's my version. So obviously everything looks a little bit less, um, well, less round. That's the only nice way to put it. The original was very, very rounded, but round edges are really hard to do. Near impossible, actually. In From the Depths. Because it's a game based on squares, or cubes, rather. So, very difficult to do circles. So everything's a little bit, um, pointier. And you may notice the turret is also a bit pointier with that giant gun barrel. The turret is where most of the historical inaccuracy is coming from. This thing can dish out death. And lots and lots of death. And unlike a turret from the 18th, sorry, 19th century, which was when this ship was built, this was built for the American Civil War, it was built by the Union to counter the USS Virginia, or CSS Virginia, rather, which was the Confederate ironclad. Um, it was built during the Civil War, and back then, their guns were really kind of garbage. Like, firing once every, like, minute or two, and being remarkably short-ranged. In an effort to make this craft more competitive in-game, I have opted to take a less historically accurate approach and give it a big gun because it needs a big gun because it only has one of them in many in many ships well let's just say in the game you probably have at least three of these type of turrets or one of these turrets and lots of missiles or something else you wouldn't just build this but for the sake of history well we're gonna have one gun turret so we might as well make it a good one the shield yeah, this is a shield, and it's very much not historically accurate, but it keeps the turret relatively safe. You see, that's the issue with From the Depths. It's a pretty good simulator, but... Well, it's a game, first and foremost. So while metal blocks in-game do... Well, they're pretty good shields, but... They don't make the best armor. In fact, there really is no near-impenetrable armor. That doesn't exist in-game. Whereas, ironclads, iron armor in the 19th century was very much near-impenetrable in the mid-19th century. So, while this is still better protected than, than a wood hull, it will still take a lot more damage than it would have historically. So, to compensate for that, Lots and lots of repair drones and repair supplies. And what these are going to do is basically fix it as it gets broken. Because again, trying to make it a little bit more competitive. Now, speaking of historical inaccuracies, 
let's take a look at this thing's top speed. Now, in-game, not super fast. It only manages around 8 knots or so, or meters per second, 8 meters per second at its fastest, which is somewhere around 15 knots, 14, 15 knots. But that's still far faster than the actual ship could travel, which had a top speed of just 6 knots. Now you may be noticing also that it sits very low in the water. That's actually historically accurate. The ship sat very low in the water, and while it was sealed, in theory, well, let's just say that was the biggest flaw with the monitor class of ships because they weren't very seaworthy, because the water could very easily rush up over the deck because they sat so low. Now the idea was to minimize their profile so they'd be harder to hit and bullets, or shells rather, would have a chance to be deflected rather than just blowing up. And that all worked quite well. Similar theories still apply today, but, well, it wasn't a very seaworthy craft. But you didn't come here for a historical lecture, you came here to see explosions. So, let's see if we can hip on in a few enemy ships. Let's start with something simple. A couple of nice little wooden ships. Let's try the Urchin. Now these, by the way, are the uh, factions in-game, and the Urchin is like the starting faction's weakest ship, so we'll spawn in two of them. They don't deal very much damage, and they're pretty easy to kill. So, I'm not expecting any problems with this battle. You can see one of them is basically dead already. We blew up their ammo, and <laughs> yeah, they're having a bad day. Both of them are now disarmed. They have no more turrets. And yeah. It has sustained too much damage. It's going to despawn momentarily. As is this. So yeah, they're basically dead. Yep. That was very fast and very easy. They despawn, leaving only a bit of rubble in their wake. So okay, that was pretty easy. But what if we wanted a tougher opponent? Let's take on a Marauder. Now, the Marauder is a bit heavier. It uses basically traditional cannons, 18th century style, 18th, 19th century style cannons, as you can see, that shoot literal cannonballs. And it's made of wood. And as you're going to see, our gun is just going to wreck this thing. It, it's not going to survive very long. See, we're just carving out chunks of it and they have done basically nothing to us. It's entirely possible they did actually nothing. And there goes ammo, and it's just... Yeah, the Deepwater Guard are not having a nice day today. Now they do actually have a front turret, a front cannon rather, it's not really on a turret. Um, but I think that's been pretty well destroyed. At this point, at this point, they're literally just firing at my starting platform. Uh, yeah. That didn't last very long. Okay. Well, then. That was very easy. So, let's take on something of a more challenging opponent. Now, this is an opponent that looks very traditional, looks like it belongs in the uh, 18th, 19th century. Not so much. This thing is actually really tough. I know it's called the Bayleaf. Do not be fooled. This thing has some pretty serious firepower and can survive far longer than you'd think. So here it is, the Bayleaf. Looks very traditional. Each of those cannons can dish out a huge punch. The only disadvantage being that they're not super accurate and they are on a broadside. They're not turreted, so that's an advantage. But this thing, it has some armor on the outside. Not very much, but a little. And it's 
pretty insane in the amount of damage it can dish out if it actually gets into broadside range. I'm not entirely sure why it's just randomly... Oh, it's firing at the spawn beacon. <laughs> it's my spawn beacon. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Please, let's not ram it. Let's not ram it. Hard port. Hard port. Yeah, hard port. Hard port. But, yeah. We have actually done a remarkably good job at just wiping this thing out. It's pretty damaged. You can see there went an ammo stockpile. They, instead of having their ammo in one central place and putting a lot of armor on it, they just have little bits everywhere so that if it goes up, it only ignites a certain, uh, certain part of the ship. Clever design, but it won't save them. So there is, well, what's left of the bay leaf. It's, it's been pretty well devastated. This, uh, fun fact, this actually got an update. The bay leaf just got replaced with a newer version. This is the newer version. The older version was much, much weaker. But this is actually relatively vulnerable. Or relatively uh, powerful, I mean. So that's kind of cool. But okay, yeah, I think we've seen enough. I think we've seen enough. So we're going to get rid of that. Now it's time to put this in perspective. Because that seems like this thing can take on anything we throw at it. I want to assure you, that is not the case. Because once the ammo stockpile goes up, there's a little bit of armor here and here. Once that ammo stockpile goes up, we're dead. So let us spawn something something terrifying. Something terrifying. It could do the uh could do the plunder. That's pretty impressive. But I think it's time we looked for truly the terror of the deep water guard. The coffin nail. This thing, I, I will say this, I love the... Where did it spawn? Oh, there it is. Uh, I love the designs for the deep water guard. Look at this. They're just torching us. And we can't aim up high enough with our gun. Yeah, the insides of our gun turret are gone. And they're not coming back, no matter how many repair bots we have. And there we go. They have penetrated our deck armor. There goes our... Our ammo store and most of the inside of our ship. I'm in here. I'm repairing as best I can. As for the repair bots, but no. It's, it's not going to survive. If we're being completely honest with ourselves. It is not going to survive. The coffin nail is completely unscathed. And has absolutely obliterated us. The Union Navy is not having a good day today either. And we are sinking rapidly. Well, rapidly is a relative term. But yeah, we are not going to survive this. Let's destroy all vehicles. We'll load in a new one. Whoops. Spawned it in right in the middle of gunfire. Oh dear. That actually took a significant amount of damage. You may notice it's not exactly a... Oh. Oh. It somehow... It spawned on some shells that blew open the bottom. Don't worry, our, our trusty repair bots will fix that. There we go. But, yeah, I think that pretty well proves that 
the monitor good ship for the time it took on it was very impressive compared to the wooden hull ships but it just couldn't handle it it could not handle it it was not seaworthy it wasn't tough enough to withstand sustained fire and it just it had flaws now it was a truly was a brilliant ship truly revolutionary we still waiting on there we go repair our main turret um, but not exactly a good craft in game so what will we be doing next time probably a British warship that changed the face of battleships forever and if you know this one, you are probably too much of a history nerd like I am. Alright guys, thank you, that's it. I, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you will consider subscribing if you haven't already. Please like, share, comment on this video if you enjoyed it. And I hope I'll see you again in another video soon.